Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, we'll take a few minutes to understand how this practice leads us to our inner development, cultivation, finally to the liberation. So, when it comes to this meditation, mainly this introduced by the Buddha 2600 years ago. Before that, even the people had the, the idea about investigating the life itself. And they knew the life is suffering and they knew this is a struggle. They knew themselves things not going to happen the way we want and it itself create unhappiness. But still they didn't know why it happened. So when the Buddha himself as Prince Siddhartha once he start to look for the liberation or Look for the truth. That truth means the reality. And to find the solution, why this suffering happens, why this unsatisfaction come to us. That was the key point. Because before the Buddha, people used to believe it is the, the power of the God, or maybe it is the power of our own karma. We have to deal with that. There is no choice. But the Buddha is the one who mentioned, found out it is nothing to do with the God or the creator, or it is nothing to do with somebody behind us. It's nothing to do with even the karma. That you are suffering nothing to do with the karma. It's, it's about your understanding. What is the understanding? What, and that is why when it comes to the foundation, that all things arise because of the ignorance. So how then that understanding related to the ignorance? Because we believe there is a permanent self-centered entity have within us as soul or as self, as I am. And that wrong understanding build up all other things around us, three poisons. Greed, hatred, and the delusion. 
So the delusion is the main root and from that the greed and the hatred arise. So it is about ourselves. And the before the Buddha, even people used to look into that, but they didn't find out the very cause. What is the, the misunderstanding? Where things go wrong? They knew some life is suffering. They, they knew there is a karma. But what the Buddha found out that how it arises because of our wrong understanding. How he found out that? Through the observing, not by anything else, observing and recognizing. So, but mostly when it comes to our life, we also have some kind of understanding. If you look very carefully, rather than observing, most of our this ordinary understanding come to us by visualizing. So, in the, the Buddha's method is observing and uh, analyzing, recognizing. So that is the met method, observing, analyzing, recognizing. So when it comes to the very conventional way, visualizing, recognizing, this is a totally different way. Of course, visualizing, you can recognize things. And that is what most of the time we do, because we depend from the, our past experience and thinking about the future. So that's why we always look for future and do things. But even when we do, when we look for the future, it's all always that we have a desire-based future, otherwise we don't see the reality of the future. It is a totally, totally different way of things. So let, 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 let's clarify that. So when we think about our achievement or the desires, we don't see the reality of the future. But when it comes to causation, cause and effect, then you recognize how things come to be as they are. So then you recognize the future. So that is a, that is a different way of understanding. And th that understanding is the kind of like a fundamental base of that all the ethics. Just imagine that we believe we're going to have, a, we, we, this not going to be the end of our life unless we attain to the liberation. So we, we believe there is a rebirth, becoming. You can name in many ways, rebirth or reincarnation or becoming another existence. So somehow that means we're not going to disappear. We're going to come back in a certain way. So when we come back, it depends on according to our own bodily, verbally, mentally action, whatever we accumulated going to, to take us to the next place. So that is where the karma handle the situation. So why it is the base of the fundamental that uh, human ethics and the the very theory of this all the spiritual practice. Because otherwise, just imagine if you if you start to think this is this is end. Whatever I do, it's it doesn't matter for tomorrow or more, more next life. Then what will happen to people? Maybe not everybody. But some people will go crazy. No? And they will do whatever they want. So then how the world going to be like this? So that's why when it comes to the fundamental human ethics, it holds by the 
the result or the karma and no once you know oh maybe i going to born again and then whatever i do it's going to come back to me so then you become kind of like a little bit even careful about you that is very necessary before go into deeper understanding and then the base with that principle once you develop certain kind of self discipline in you you are capable to more observe into the the practice so when it come to that observation because the, that is the very foundation observing analyzing realization to visualize you no need anything you can you know open your eyes close your eyes sleeping you know walking you know sitting talking you can do visualize or you know in any way but we know in ourselves in our life in our real life we know what we think does it not going to you know happen we can't count our dreams our visualization as our life it may be help for us to you know fantasize make it kind of like a, you know to get into a little bit of you know high ourselves and kind of like you feel like you love it it is good for the moment but deeply it doesn't have any meaning but when it come to observing itself to observe you have to come to the moment see that's itself the foundation that's why it's itself the practicing the journey create yourself go towards the wisdom so when it come to observe itself you have to be there and to observe you have to be with the the present moment of the object so then the subject and object integrate and the right away you tune into the reality so people used to do it from the ancient time and analyze it but the realization was not that much strong and analyze observe analyze but when it come to realization the buddha is through the vipassana it took another the major step forward so that is vigorously thoroughly deeply analytically realize how things come to be as they are and then that is where he recognized even though we experience things even though we experience the self there's there's nothing belong to fix permanent self centered theory there's nothing belong to that kind of theory everything we can take as an entity but it is not independent or it is not permanent concrete level of existence it's always change and the changing moment is always no one can just by dreaming recognize it but if you analyze and observe recognize then you can see how things come to be as they are because you recognize the very causation the the very core of happen so otherwise we always have to deal with uncertainty that's the very nature that that is what the very ordinary life that brings the fear that bring the unsatisfaction not what happened to us looking look deeper we always have the fear about the future 
very next moment the unknown tomorrow that make us fearful unhappiness unsatisfaction the greed when it come to greed of course that whatever happened in the past ignite little bit but mostly the greed where i where i focus to the future so all this come when you don't know the mechanism of causation because when you see the mechanism of causation when you know that it's a kind of like the the, the very principal teaching of you know as above so below you know so you you once you recognize that the causation the connection you see things that bring the peace that bring the the calmness that brings the wisdom to go through the situations that's what in the ancient time people used to have and when it come to today as you know this all the logic biology zoology so this logic so the logic itself represent the science so that is in the western after einstein so the before the einstein in the western they didn't have any logic but in the eastern there was a logic it is not about the this biology that the human body it's mainly about the the whole life it is totally different just imagine when it come to analyze the the moment of you analyzing your whole life as together in this very moment and if the western doctor come and with the biology and try to analyze your body as a physical entity it is totally different but in the eastern even when it come to today ayurveda or that kind of medical system but more than the medical system it is a different path but when it come to the spiritual path they count this body as a whole life that's mean from your parents the the day you came to your mother's womb to today that whole life is in this very moment representing who you are so that is the base in the eastern culture that's why when the 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 girl come to the family when a baby girl come to the family they protect her very well why because their purpose is to make her a mother because they need a good child so from the from the beginning of this child the baby girl they protect this baby girl you know always parents put the attention and take care of her why because she going to bring her child so that it's count by the whole life it is not a one incident so in when it come to the spiritual path that very moment of you is a result of that all your parents to today around that your environment and everything and your people that you used to associate things you eat and things you went here and there things you studies that ever and when it come to that kind of way to understand things what you can see in this very moment when it come to your body you recognize that everything is the result from the your past past mean from today to yesterday day before yesterday so whatever the past and then you recognize this is the result and if you go little bit deeper what you see 
the causation, causality, because you are the result of that whatever happened. So that deeper recognition took a different way of understanding about what we experience. It is not because of the self or it is not because of the who I am or my name or kind of like that, that all my past is a reason for me to experience this. And once you know that what happened to your future, you start to recognize, oh, oh so that's mean that whatever I do, bring this kind of result, that kind of result, so that way you are capable to change your future. Now, now you know the mechanism. It is not you, it is the very nature. So now you know the mechanism and according to things you perform, you do according to your bodily, verbally, mentally actions, not only action behind that action, the intention you carry, bring the result tomorrow. And once you know that the karmic mechanism become powerless because you get the key. You are you use the karma now. You are the one who handling karma because you know you don't give a chance. You don't wait. Oh, good karma come to me. No, you know how to generate it. And by the power of that, you change that your destination. That's it's kind of like you get the the real power to yourself. And then that all the, you know, the God or the creator or everybody, all the, you know, the stories, that things help us. Why? Because now you have the key. And maybe they, they, are, they are waiting for us to, you know, do something or punish something, or, but now you know, oh, if I generate that with my intention, that is the major point. With my intention, if I do good bodily, verbally, mentally action, and out of that action, the reactions never going to be unprofitable. There is no way out of loving kindness, generosity, compassion, and wisdom if you do any bodily, verbally, mentally action. There is no way in this universe it's going to be a bad karma. See, that's a very simple method, but we don't get it. And, and once you see it, you think, you think you, we think your intention, and then if you do any, any bodily, verbally, mentally action, if the intention is wrong, there is no way in this universe, out of that kind of bodily, verbally, mentally, action that's mean related to greed hatred or the delusion that means the the root of the intention there is no way you're going to get a good one so now you know so once you know that what happens it's create a kind of like a stillness in you with your with your reactions that stillness Hold you before you going to do any motion. That's mean actions. That stillness is kind of like the comeback power. And you study, you know, you do things and you grow yourself and you sharing your life with others, but still you know how to come back. You do anything, you interfere with the society, but still you know whatever you do, intention is the key point. You think yourself, finally going to decide what should be the outcome. So that intention you can't get by you know, observing outside things, it come by observing inside. So that is the, the method of the vipassana. You go deeper and go into the bottom. Sometimes when you go that way, 
sometimes this is the thing we take just the surface level of thoughts as kind of like the intention no there are roots underneath so it's same thing you know look at the nature that outside trees you can't uh, the, you can't the fruits at the 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 whole tree that even that you see from the outside you can't the you just can't the take you can't take only the fruits at the the result no you have to see you should know the roots are the major important thing because if the roots die this can't be here so the same thing with you now your motion that happened in this outside world and it build up the energy and then it become emotion and the, your reaction result comes so it's, it's kind of like that but now you hold your emotions with the the balance and the the with the stillness that you develop inside you that is the very meaning of samadhi in other way we call undisturbed mind that means you do you have the stillness and the tranquility mind you tranquilize the mind and the collective awareness this all means that you have the very strong well balanced stillness inside you within your own desire you know that if it is unprofitable you recognize it and replace the the profitable one and whatever happened with the outside world and you have power to to come back so that way once you come to that stillness by the time what happens you are capable to go more deep you become more strong your strength going to become join with the recognition and that and then out of that the wisdom you gain going to become more sharp and clear and it going to become powerful than the sun or the moon so that is what you need and that come out of only by practicing observing analyzing recognizing and that doesn't mean that you always have to keep your your eyes closed and you have to be you no know, meditation posture kind of like that no once it become a mental habit or the mechanism once you know once your awareness capable to that develop that method any time anywhere you just live with it so it it's become your life so that what that is where we go that is what we need that's what we have to build up in us with the practice so once you have that it itself bring the happiness satisfaction clarity with your all bodily verbally mentally actions within 24/7 and then out of that always you generate something profitable and it develop your creativity it develop your accuracy it develop your clarity so once you have that you are capable to work with other people more comfortably because you are the one who capable to to see the right things 
and do the right things and even though you not depend from the outcome you know the outcome going to be exactly good why remember that the mechanism the intention because you see the intention and when your intention is good there is no way that out of that good intention something bad going to happen maybe surface level the turbulence can happen but that doesn't mean your journey going to end there no maybe you pass on your seat belt and little bit sit down and wait it will pass so like that in this path everything not going to be nice but still when it come to that deeper understanding you are capable to to go through any situation without holding harboring grasping that situation as a permanent moment that is where your liberation happens that is where you going to become free from you that is where you experience what is emptiness and what is nothingness and that is where you going to come to your finish line so with that let's get into practice a little bit now so your right palm on your left and neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture so bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes three times and say so patveva oh may i be well and happy three times Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved to wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment, with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. also think for a moment we spending in this lifetime the detach your all the desires and get into the practice knowingly this is the buddha's path and this is not the permanent moment but still you are capable to get your best so with that intention bring attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area and deeply and gently breathing breathe out three times and find the sensation please and allow your inhalation exhalation happen itself and when it happens recognize it as inhalation and as exhalation through the sensation not by visualizing not by thinking about it or not by dreaming just by observing and recognizing do nothing extra So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times, and find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations, happen itself. 
and allow everything to settle down as it is. Keep your focus to the breathing. If your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again and settle down with the sensation.
Bring my attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this, with clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pretty or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward, visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, Spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Tibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. ಇತ್ತಾವತಾಚಾಮಿ ಅತ್ತಾಯ ಪಟಿಪತಿ ಜಾತಿ ಜರಾವ್ಯಾಪರಿಪುಂಜಿಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇದೇ ಪುಣ್ಯಕಮ್ಮಸವಕ್ತೋತು ಸಬ್ಬದುಃಖಾಪಮಂಚತು ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ ಯು